Hey there Jedi Knights, Masters, and Younglings! Welcome to Which Lightsaber Form, the video series where I take the role of a Jedi Blade Master, evaluating characters from different franchises and deciding which lightsaber form suits them best. Today, we will be examining the fighting style of Arya Stark from Game of Thrones, the faceless assassin and the hero of Winterfell. Take it away, John. Though she grew up in the Winterfell court, Arya Stark had a combative history and instruction more similar to Oberyn Martell than Jon Snow or Jaime Lannister. Her first proper teacher was Sirio Forel of Bravos, the master water dancer. Unlike most Westerosi sword disciplines, water dancing favored mobility, light armor, and small swords, thrusts instead of slashes, dodges instead of plate armor. What's more, Arya was equipped with a small sword called Needle which drastically limits her options when it comes to some of the other lightsaber styles. Within Star Wars, the Bravo stance pairs almost exactly with Form 2, Makashi, which also adheres to quick stabs and agility above all else. Like water dancing, Makashi favored the lithe against those of greater strength, like Asajj Ventress against Anakin Skywalker, or the old against youth, like Darth Vader against Luke Skywalker. Of course, Arya's training was cut short, unintended, when the Kingsguard cornered and defeated Sirio Forel, whether or not he survived is a debate for online theorists. After a few years on the run, Arya eventually found herself in the homeland of her former master, the free city of Bravos. There she committed herself to the many-faced god and the faceless men in hopes of becoming an assassin so she could avenge the deaths of her family. While most of her early training with the Faceless Men was largely grunt work and she had a minor stint with some blindness, she did become proficient with the staff. In the lore of Star Wars, Jedi and Sith who use saber staffs are often noted as practitioners of Form 6, Niman, as the saber staff required several proficiencies in other techniques. Within Legends continuity, Exar Kun spearheaded the use of a double-bladed lightsaber as an extension of Niman. And more famously within Star Wars canon, Darth Maul did the same. Form 6, also known as the Moderation Form, is perhaps the most diverse style of Jedi combat. As described in The Jedi Path, Niman does not share any weakness of any other style, but it also shares none of their strengths either. Where its true clout lies is in its versatility and adaptation. For Arya Stark, who ended up leading the life of an assassin, there is no other lightsaber style that's more perfect for her. See, for example, her sparring session with Brienne of Tarth. Though she was outmatched by way of power and physique, she kept up with the much larger woman by undermining her and her conventional Westori style. Arya's skill was varied, just like a master of Form 6. Not only could she wield a small sword like a water dancer, but she could also connect with a staff like a faceless man or fight with a dagger when times got rough. I mean, just look at this. Not unlike the pioneer of Niman, Exar Kun, Arya is more a trickster than a brawler, a jack of all trades than a specialist, and she uses every tool at her disposal. One key example of her versatility beyond her assumed skill in off-screen assassinations is in the episode A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. Within the episode, Arya demands Gendry to design her quarterstaff based on the oncoming battle. Knowing she would have to face hordes of enemies, she adapted her toolset and made use of a weapon better suited against her opponents. Take this in comparison to other characters of the show who mostly used longswords in situations where a spear would have been more advantageous, and Arya looks a bit like a genius. One can also argue there's a smidge of a Form 4 Ataru influence in her style. While we wouldn't go as far as to say she would have specialized in the style, there are hints of the acrobatics attributed to the form. However, her gymnastic efforts are more defensive than offensive, which is usually not the case for most Form 4 users in Star Wars, who are usually quite aggressive. In being nimble and light-footed, Arya is also very small. True, she does have a lot of constitution and can take a punch, kick, or a set of stairs very well, but let's be honest, if she's getting grabbed by any Westori knight, including Brienne, 
and especially men like the Hound or the Mountain, there isn't much she could do, unless she's got a dagger to fall back on, of course. Knowing this, Arya is forced to rely on her acrobatics and the simple act of, well, not getting hit at all. So while Arya Stark started out as a Makashi specialist, she went on to embrace the philosophies of the Niman to the point where it kind of encompassed the entire scope of her style. And while I do believe she has some aspects of Ataru, I really think it's more of a carryover from her training as an assassin with regards to how she would escape her assassination attempts. I don't believe it was necessarily applied in her combat um, in a very fluid way. So I think it's more of a, an appendage than it is really a core value of her fighting style. As her hypothetical battle master, I would advise her to continue diversifying her combative palette, uh, adhering to the likes of Niman. I would also encourage her to go back to her roots of Makashi, just in case her tricks up her sleeve doesn't work against maybe a more seasoned opponent that she really will have to be able to really, really know how to do well as a one-to-one -one fighter. While I don't think she should become a dedicated duelist like a Count Dooku, I would advise her to have maybe a few sessions with a master like him, just so she can really hone that in. However, as a dedicated master just for her, I would wholeheartedly recommend the likes of XR Kun. The guy was sort of a master of deception, something that Arya would take to very nicely. For each, no weapon was off limits or above learning, so long as it worked for the situation, and more importantly, so long that it earned the victory, they were gonna use it. And I actually would be very stoked if I did see Arya underneath the tutelage of XR Kun. I think she can do some pretty killer stuff with him. As a final examination, I think Arya will continue on the path of a Nemon specialist with a little bit slight use of Makashi, especially now as she is becoming a sailor slash pirate sort of a thing. And in her line of work, she would need to keep her options open. I mean, can you imagine Captain Arya as like some swashbuckling Hollywood pirate? I totally can see it. While young, I do see Arya still continuing to use her Ataru in a defensive manner with regards to dodging and evading, but as she gets older, I would hope she would start leaning back into Makashi. Similar, I've said this in past videos to like a Count Dooku who's a little bit older and it's um, something that's a little bit more sustainable, uh, but I can see it going um, either way, though I, I would hope that in one-to-one -one combat, she would adhere to more fencing principles, especially since she's using a small sword and she would be on, you know, pirate-esque adventures. Especially, especially if her Nemon tactics and her tricks don't work. She definitely would need to have that as a as a solid backup. Uh, of course, this is all my opinion based on the lore of Star Wars and the Game of Thrones TV series. Do you agree that Arya Stark was a Nemon specialist with a dash of Makashi? Or do you think that she had a different combination? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, peace, love, may the force be with you, and seven blessings.